Well, well, welcome to today's talks. Thursday, the 16th of February. Now, of all the states in the United States, Florida has uh, led all of them in collecting data, or perhaps not so much collecting data, but making that data public and acting on that data in meaningful ways, as we've seen in previous recordings. So this is from the Florida Health Department. And this is the figures that they've just published um, from the Vaccine Adverse Events Reporting System in Florida. So here we see the numbers on this scale here, pretty large numbers. And uh, these are the vaccine adverse events reported in 2006, 2007, all fairly low. And then all of a sudden we get to uh, the pandemic uh, years uh, where they were vaccinating. 2020, of course, there wasn't many vaccines for, well, there wasn't, they only came in at the very end of 2020. 2021, most of the vaccines were given, huge increase, and the vaccine still being given in 2022, uh, also representing an increase. So we see this massive surge in cases from the state of Florida from uh, adverse events reported from the vaccines. So this is the website where this communication from the Surgeon General of Florida is located. Uh, do, as always, uh, don't take my word for things, check it out for yourself. Now let's get straight down to some of the things that he's been saying. Um, critical uh, that as public health professionals, responses are adapted to the present to chart a future guided by the data. So we did... There was a particular risk-benefit analysis when these vaccines first came out. There's now a completely different risk-benefit analysis. That's what the Surgeon General is saying. We have to be up to date so we can guide the future in a meaningful way and take proper decisions for the future based on evidence. Now, this is the overall report submitted to the uh, Vaccine Adverse Events Reporting System 2006 to 2020. And that's the graphic we've already looked at. And there we have it there. And it really is... Um, I don't think you need me to point out the level of the uh, the level of the increase there, which is really quite uh, quite one heck of a surge. So we could draw a line on that, couldn't we? It was uh, that's uh, it's something like that, isn't it? And of course, this reflects the amount of vaccines given in 2021, and uh, to some extent in 2022. And of course, the vaccination program in in Florida, from memory, started around about January uh, 2021. So. Um, an unequivocal, unequivocal increase in cases there. In fact, it gives us some figures um, in Florida. 1,700% uh, increase to uh, VAERS reports, huge increase, compared to an increase of 400% in overall vaccines administered. So four, four, four times more vaccines than normal uh, administered, but uh, 17 times more uh, adverse uh, events. Um, so we would expect this to be... Uh, 400% increase, which is probably something I don't know about. About there is, about about there is probably what we would expect, and about there is what we would expect based on the numbers. But it shows that uh, the mRNA vaccines are giving side effects which are greatly uh, disproportional um, to the amount of vaccines given in terms of the number. Uh, reporting of life threatening um, life threatening conditions by vaccine side effects also increased. That increased. Uh, well, 4,400%, that's even more. That's just a huge, that's just a huge increase, isn't it? And and just to show you, I'm not making that up. You probably can't see it on this finer print, but, but there it is there, 4,400%. So absolutely, um, well, it's alarming, isn't it, really? Um, why aren't the other states producing data like this? Is Florida the only one that can count? It would appear so. Um so um, this is a novel increase uh, not seen in the 2019 H1N1 vaccination program, for example. So 2009. So if we look at 2009 there, again, we can see that when the H1N1 vaccine was given, there was essentially no increase. Um, but of course, that's the old fashioned. <laughs> well, that's you could say a proper vaccine. That, 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 that's the one that was based on uh, mushed up dead uh, flu viruses as opposed to the mRNA type. There's a need for additional unbiased research, says the Surgeon General. Um, and I think <laughs> I agree with that, and I think if you're watching, uh, you agree with that uh, as well. Uh, to better understand the COVID-19 vaccine's short and long-term effects, yes, we need this. 
The findings in Florida are consistent with various studies to, to continue to undercover such risks. Now, he gives these studies, and we will be uh, critiquing those to make sure that the, uh, the, the Surgeon General of Florida is correct. But it's interesting to note that he has written a letter as well to the heads of the uh, CDC and the FDA. Uh, so this letter is uh, illustrating the risk factors associated with COVID-19 vaccines and emphasising the need for additional transparency. It's, it's just, we, we couldn't have phrased it better ourselves, could we? And this is the uh, letter here that is sent. Uh, I put the link there, do read it for yourself. It's to these big cheeses at the FDA and CDC. It's all full of common sense stuff. It's full of data. It's full of the figures from Florida and it's uh, Joseph A. La Ladipo, Surgeon General of Florida. Now, in addition to the Florida data, uh, Dr. Ladipo gives some, some academic evidence that we're going to check out to make sure he's, uh, he's getting this right. Um, so uh, studies cited in this report... This one, serious adverse uh, events of special interest following mRNA COVID-19 vaccine in randomised trials in adults. Check out the link. mRNA COVID vaccines were associated with an excess risk of serious adverse events, including coagulation disorders, blood clotting, acute cardiac injury, unfortunately, Bell's palsy, usually temporary. That one's probably the least concerning. And as we saw yesterday, one of the more alarming ones, together with a heart one, is encephalitis. The risk was 1 in 550 individuals, which is much higher than other vaccines. And uh, uh, here's the paper here that's in uh, the paper in question. I've checked it out and uh, it looks like it checks out to me. Check it out for yourself. Make sure that you agree with me and the Surgeon General of Florida. This paper went on to say uh, something else, which I want to highlight now. Here it is here. The excess risk of serious adverse events found in our study points to the need of a formal harm-benefit analysis. We've been saying this for ages. Risk-benefit analysis needs to be contemporary based on the latest data. Not to do so, in my view, is negligent. Or, well, I wouldn't like to think of any alternatives. Negligent is perhaps the kindest way I can put it. Um, particularly those uh, who are, particularly those that are stratified according to the risk of serious outcomes of COVID-19. Young people we know way, way lower risk. These analysis will require public release of participant level uh, data sheets. Now, this is interesting. Um, we need this information from the uh, from the national. Uh, authorities that collect this information age of the people that have the vaccine the side effects that they had and, and the participant level data now of course what the authorities say is well we can't have this 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 all this will betray confidentiality but i was talking to david davis the U, the uk member of parliament and he he's told me that there's a new system in the uk now where, the, where this can be done completely anonymously this can be done completely anonymously. And trust me, if we can do it in the UK, your computer systems in the United States can certainly do it. This can be done, maintaining anonymity. And in my view, it's negligent if it's not done. Participant level data, the age, the sex, the, 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 uh, the comorbidities, everything else about the individuals that took the vaccine and the side effects they suffered from at particular ages should be done. Now, this is the second paper that uh, Dr. Ladapo describes. And again, we're going to check out what he said uh, about this paper. So this is this one here. Increased emergency cardiovascular events amongst under 40 population in Israel. During the vaccine rollout in the third COVID-19 wave, increased acute cardiac arrests and other cardiac events following mRNA vaccinations. That's what the Surgeon General says. Is he correct? Well, here's the information from the actual paper itself. An increase of over 25% was detected. Volume of cardiac arrest and acute coronary syndrome. So basically, this is things like myocardial infarction and unstable angina, things that indicate a blockage in the 
or partial blockage or full blockage in the coronary arteries. To emergency medical services, calls on the, uh, this is 16 to 39 year olds, and that's data for January, uh, January 2021 to May 2021. So 25% increase in emergency calls. And then the next uh, paper, this is the last one we'll look at that is cited here. That's this paper here. Again, these are all available. They're all uh, public domain. You can check them out for yourself. Let's look at roughly, firstly, what the Surgeon General said, and then what the, uh, the paper says. Um, Surgeon General says this, assessment of the risk of thromboembolic and thrombocytopenic events related to COVID-19 vaccines and found preliminary evidence of increased risk of both coronary disease and cardiovascular disease. So is he correct in this assessment? Well, this paper here, uh, as we see from uh, three Nordic countries, remember we're looking at this paper here now, Surgeon General quotes, uh, over a over quarter of a million uh, participants, 265,339 hospital contacts. In the 28 day, this is this is me talking directly from the paper now, or the paper talking directly to us really. In the 28 day period following vaccination, there was an increased rate of coronary arterial disease following mRNA vaccine, that's the Moderna vaccine. And the relative risk there is 1.3, 1.13. Now that doesn't sound like a lot, it's 13% increase. But 13% of well over 300 million people in the United States would be one heck of a lot, wouldn't it? When you think about it in those terms, this is massive, a massive risk, massive, massive risk. Huge. Increased rate of coagulation for all three vaccines. So the AstraZeneca vaccine, it was more than twice as likely. Uh, for the, uh, that's the, that's the Pfizer vaccine, isn't it? For the Pfizer vaccine, relative risk was 1.12, so 12% increase. Moderna, it was a 20%, uh, in 26% increase. So, Huge risk for all three vaccines, um, particularly the AstraZeneca, of course, which is why we stopped using it, um, depending on who you ask. British Heart Foundation said we stopped using it because the new ones are better. We've talked about that before. I mean, people, you know, there's so many people trying to, I don't know, making themselves look silly, really. Um, no other way to put it. Increase in risk of cerebrovascular disease in three Nordic countries. Uh, this was the AstraZeneca vaccine, 32% increase. Pfizer vaccine, 9% increase. Moderna, 21% uh, increase. And again, these might not sound like a lot, but multiply these by an entire population. You've got tens of millions of people. Florida says this, to support transparency, the state of Florida reminds healthcare providers to accurately communicate the risk and benefits of all clinical interventions to their patients, including those associated with COVID-19 vaccines. Additional risks continue to be identified and disclosed to the public. So additional risks continue to be identified. And in the state of Florida, these are disclosed to the public disclosed to the public and there's further information there i'll leave those hyperlinks in so um florida leading the way on transparency but at the same time showing um levels of adverse reactions from the vaccines that really are quite alarming and also pointing out quite unequivocally that the risk benefit analysis has changed i mean that's that's the graph it's just it's just a huge increase. Let's hope we get similar graphics from all the other states now in the next few days. I think we can assume the data is available. I mean, given that there's another 49 states and the data is available and Florida's released the data, I mean, surely there can be no reason why the other 49 states wouldn't want to release this data, can there? Surely not. The data is available in the UK. Let's also release it in similar terms. Um, we still haven't had an update on the um, deaths by vaccine status in the UK yet. Um, there's some indication we might get it later this month, but we haven't had it yet. And it's been getting on for nine months now. I mean, what, what, what can governments possibly have to hide? 
you know, it's not as if they've got some financial vested interest in this. Surely it's not as if they're being manipulated by international companies or anything like that. Just publish the data. Give us the facts. I might not be smart enough to work it all out, but there are plenty of people out there that are. And then we'll know. Well done, state of Florida. Badly done other 49 states. Uh, badly done the UK. Badly done Europe. Badly done Canada. Badly done uh, New Zealand, uh, Australia. Well done, state of Florida. Thank you for watching.